away. Whenever I train, it's 100% focus. I am all the way locked in, laser-like focus because to me, it's not worth doing something 100 times halfway focus or halfway into it when I can do it 20 or 30 times with 100% focus. I think that I can learn 150 times faster if I am focused in and locked in from the very beginning. So I only train about 45 minutes to an hour and a half, um, probably six days a week, but it's absolutely exhausting because of the way that I approach my training. So I'm not going to go out there and just juggle a little bit and then do some drills. No, it's 100% at game speed with lasered in focus. And that's the way that I approach every single training and I approach every single game with the national team, with my club, with whatever, because it's an opportunity to get better. And that's the way that I'm going to approach the game and I'm going to approach it because I want to be the best on the field. And so if I train like that, it allows me to be my best whenever I do play in high pressure situations. When I was little, I didn't really have childhood dreams in the normal kind of sense that kids usually have in wanting to be a doctor or a lawyer or a nurse or the next president or whatever. That just really wasn't what I thought about. I just knew that I was good at moving and I was good at catching things and I was good at uh, being fast and, and using my body so that is really kind of all I focused on as a kid. Obviously I was always doing my studies and, and uh, trying to learn things but I knew what I was good at and I loved what I was good at. So when I fell in love with soccer I kind of knew that's just what I wanted to do and I didn't know how I was going to do it because there wasn't even a pro league at that point. But that became my goal was to be a soccer player, be on the women's national team, go to UNC, be a Tar Heel, win national championships. That's just something that I decided when I was nine years old after my mom and I went and watched UNC kick absolute ass one weekend on a girls road trip. And from that point on, I fell in love with the campus and I fell in love with soccer and that's exactly what I wanted to do. The question that I get most often after winning the World Cup is what's next? What can you possibly do <laughs> that could top the World Cup? And it's a great question, but it's also one that completely befuddles me because I don't understand the question necessarily. The My ambitions and my <sighs> passion for soccer isn't because I want to win World Cups. It isn't because I want to win Olympics. Those things are amazing and I do want to do that. But those are my personal goals. That's not exactly what I want to get out of the game. I want to realize my personal best. And I want to realize my personal excellence. And I want to see how far I can push myself. And to me that is the ultimate goal. That's the ultimate accomplishment that I want to be able to um, do within my career. I'm so blessed to have a really incredible family. They have been like the, my support system forever um, since I was little in whatever I want to do. So when we won a World Cup, it was like a team win because they were 100% a part of it in my heart and my mind because I know how much they put into it for me to be successful. So being able to share that with them and being able to have them around me was something that was a, truly a moment that I'll always remember. But because of the World Cup and because of training for the World Cup and because of the uh, kind of awesome attention that we've been getting afterwards, 
I haven't been able to spend any time with them and I feel like uh, they're the people I want to spend the most time with but I haven't been able to see them. Playing in Pittsburgh was one of the best moments of my career and personally I loved being able to see how excited the city was and see how excited my friends and family were. They actually had to basically get an entire <laughs> section to themselves. They probably had like section 130 or whatever all for Klingenberg so it's really really cool and something that's incredibly special because I've never been able to play a game in Pittsburgh after high school so all of these people that have supported me and have been a part of my career in its infancy almost got to experience this really cool part of my career now with me in a really awesome way with my family involved. So that was one of the most epic moments that I've ever had. I have a little to come out of here, a U.S. record for a standalone friendly in the history of the U.S. Women's National Team in your hometown. just black or does it still have toenail no polish? It's polish. <laughs> Shut up, it is. It's just embarrassing. Classic. <laughs> 